Linear Control Systems Lecture Number 16. I'm your instructor Yasir Amir Khan, and I welcome you to this lecture. This lecture is connected to lecture number 15 and 12. This lecture is related to state variable feedback control. And in this lecture, we will continue with the type 1 servo discussion and we will solve a numerical problem as well. Now, for your revision with what we have seen in the previous lecture, that is lecture number 15, type 1 servo. Type 1 servo system, uh, it's that system which has a free integrator in its loop gain. We, uh, we have seen in our last class that uh, in order to control this type of uh, system, we can use the concept of uh, state variable feedback control for regulator. And uh, in, the regula in the case of regulator, uh, the input of the system was zero and the output was supposed to be zero and it goes to zero asymptotically. That is, as time proceeds to infinity, the output goes to zero. That is called asymptotically out, uh, going to zero. The output goes to zero asymptotically means that as the time proceeds to infinity, the output goes to zero. That was the case of regulator. Now the problem is that real world systems don't have a zero input and they don't uh, are not expected to be uh, to have a zero output. So for these real world si si systems, uh, we use the concept of servo systems. And for servo systems, uh, in designing the control, we will use the idea of a regulator. For that, uh, we considered a trick in our last lecture that was we converted the system into a regulator by introducing the concept of error that is the difference between state variables value at any time t and its value at inf t approaches infinity its steady state value of x and the instantaneous value of x at uh, any value of time so x t minus x infinity was uh, error and we introduced that and in by the help of that we converted the servo system into a regulator. Now, here we, uh, in this slide, you can see that this is our system that we want to control. Again, x is the state vector. It has n number of rows in one column. u is the control input. In this case, in this lecture and the previous lecture, u is a scalar. It's, we have one input, we have one output, y is also a scalar. A is system matrix, it is n by n. It has n number of rows and n number of columns, where n is the order of the system also. B is, he has one column and n number of rows, because we have one input. C has one row and n number of columns. So this is our system. These two equations, equation number 10-19 and 10-20, these two equations describe are given system that we want to control and this is the in this slide you can see the block diagram of uh, state variable feedback control of a type 1 servo system you can see that the plant is there in the center uh, with the state equations are implemented there and then the output equation the uh, state variables x1 up to xn are coming out of the state equations and they are going into the block of uh, output equation y is equal to cx and then we get the output what we have done is that we have connected the uh, state variable feedback controller along with it the gains that you see he, here k2 k3 up to kn they are uh, inserted in the feedback path uh, we are taking the feedback from x starting from x2 x3 up to xn they go through k2 k3 up to kn and with a negative sign we have a feedback now x1 is uh, can be picked up from the output of the plant but we have taken it as from the output because in this case uh, output y is equal to x1 so we have taken it from there we can also take it from x uh, from the x's x1 up to n coming out of the uh, state equation so there from there x goes uh, to the summer that is on the left hand side and that is also connected to the input of the system that is r 
so we have r minus x1 the summer on the left hand extreme is r minus x1 this r minus x1 then goes to k1 it is multiplied with this uh, gain k1 and then it goes into the summer from the with the positive sign so since we have uh, done x uh, r minus x1 therefore this is also a negative feedback so if you compare it with the uh, previous situation that is of regulator we had no r there was zero input of the system so if r is equal to zero over here again this becomes that regulator system but r is not zero and we want uh, the output to track or follow this r that is actually the problem over here in servo system servo systems are those systems which track the input they are supposed to follow the input signal the output must be must follow the input signal that is r in this case so the difference between uh, r and x1 and since x1 is the output y equal to y therefore actually the difference between y, uh, r and y that is our error signal uh, over here and that is going into the through k1 into the system so this is the overall block diagram of our type 1 uh, state variable feedback control of type 1 servo system and we want to design these k1 k2 k3 up to kn that is actually the design problem determining the appropriate values of k1 up to kn so that some design specification is met in our case the design specification is uh, the closed loop poles that is the system that you are seeing over here in this slide it's it must have some required closed loop poles those required closed loop poles are pre-specified before the de design process starts we must know those poles we must set a target that this these must be the poles of the final system that we will come up with that we will design so these poles are either given in the question or they are determined on the basis of performance of a real world system such as the rise time overshoot settling time etc this is what we can discuss in the upcoming lectures and that is purely based on the time response uh, specifications chapter and uh, what i am saying over here just let let's uh, get a quick review of this slide what i am saying is that we have this system in front of you which we want to design designing means we want to find the values of k1 k2 k3 up to kn and when we have to design them then they must be designed on some design criteria on some basis we must have some target that target is the required closed loop poles that must be given before the start of the problem or we must determine those poles and set them as target and then we try to meet those that target those are the poles of this system the system that we will come up with finally that that system will have those poles that is the design target so this is what we are doing this is our block systems block diagram and we want to find the value of k1 k2 k3 up to kn that is our uh, challenge over here now in this slide number four you can see the control law that we have used it is the same basically control law minus k u is equal to minus kx the only difference is that over here we have added an additional term that is k1r in the control law of the regulator that we had seen in the previous lecture that is u is equal to minus kx we have added an additional term that is k1 times r so that is what is uh, an additional thing over here and this is the control law that we will implement we have rather implemented this control law in the previous block diagram the block diagram that you just saw in slide number three is actually implementation of this control law this control law is used for a type 1 servo system now come to slide number five here you can see that what we have done is that in our basic equation that was equation number 10 19 we have uh, substituted the value of control law over here u is equal to minus kx plus k1r we have substituted that over here and and this is what we get equation number 10 dash 22 and the other thing that you see here is that we had defined the error signal uh, that is difference between xt and x infinity the state the instantaneous current value of xt and the steady state value of x that is the error signal and on the basis of this uh, we can convert equation number 10-22 into 10-25 this is what we have done already done in previous lecture we can convert this equation into this form which is the form of a regulator so by this uh, introducing this thing 
that is x t minus x steady state value for x we can can convert the given servo system into a regulator system and then we can use the same designing method procedure that we had for learned in the previous lecture now we have the example our today's lectures focus is on this particular example take a few minutes and moments and read this example thoroughly what is stated over here and what is uh, required what is to be done what information is given and uh, you can pause the video or you can uh, and you can read this and try to understand this before proceeding forward now in this example you can see that that is example number 10-4 design a type 1 servo system when the plant transfer function has an integrator assume that the plant transfer function is given by so you can see y upon u this is the plant transfer function you can see the free integrator one the one uh, one upon s s in the denominator has been taken out common so it's a type 1 system the desired closed loop poles are minus 2 plus minus j to under root 3 and s is equal to minus 10 so these are the desired poles of the con final control system the control system that we will design they should have these poles Assume that the system configuration is the same as shown in figure that we have already seen uh, in previous slide. The reference input R is a step function. And uh, not only we have to design the system, we have to obtain the step response of this system as well. This is the task in this example. Now let's solve this example. You can see that uh, we have the plant's transfer function 1 upon s, s plus 1, s plus 2. So open the bracket in the denominator and we get 1 upon s cube plus 3s plus 2s. Now divide this, uh, multiply and divide by s cube so that we convert it in form of integrators in the next step what we will do is that we will make the simulation diagram from this transfer function once we have the simulation diagram then we will make the state variable model and then our process of uh, working of this problem will start so here in this slide you can see the simulation diagram constructed on the basis of the transfer function as we did in chapter number three as you have seen in the earlier lectures now what we have done in addition to making the simulation diagram is that we assign a state variable to e output of each integrator starting from the right hand side the output is assigned x1 its input is uh, definitely its x1's derivative so that when it this x1's derivative passes through integrator it becomes x1 then we assign x2 to the output of second integrator and it's at its input we have the derivative of x2 then the third integrator that is close, closest to the, to the summer that is the uh, leftmost integrator third integrator starting from the right hand side at the output of this integrator we assign x3 and its input is x3's derivative now we write the equations you can see that x1 derivative is equal to x2 x2 derivative is equal to x3 and x3 derivative is the output of summer and, in, and into the summer goes u and two other signals that is x2 multiplied with 2 and x3 multiplied with, with 3 and with, they go with negative sign into the summer and you can see that y is equal to x1 x1 and y are both are same signal they are the output so we get these equations now here we are arranging this equation so that x1 derivative equals to 0 x1 plus x2 plus 0 x3 plus 0 u because x1's derivative is equal to x2 and then in the same way we arrange all these equations so that we can write them in form of matrix Here we have a uh, nearly state variable model. We have rather written the matrices, system matrix, input matrix, output matrix, D matrix, 
from the above equations and then we of course we can write the state variable model uh, in its uh, usual form what impo one important step here you must note before we proceed before you proceed is that check the controllability uh, the technique the method told in the next in the previous uh, lecture uh, use that and make the controllability matrix and check the controllability this is our control law which uh, we have already seen in previous slide uh, minus kx plus k1 r and uh, k matrix has k1 k2 up to k3 in this case because we the n order of the system is 3 and the error dynamic system is shown over here error is defined as xt minus x infinity and this is what we will be using the next slide now in the question we were given some poles the required poles on the basis of that we will consult the desired polynomial as you can see over here uh, we have a m function of s as our desired polynomial we put the poles in it uh, by changing the sign you can see over here and then open the uh, brackets we get this polynomial which is shown over here check this out construct this polynomial in this the coefficients are alpha 2 alpha 1 alpha naught alpha 2 is 14 alpha 1 is 56 alpha naught is 160 so this is uh, what we will compare this we will compare this polynomial with the polynomial that is obtained from the uh, system and on the basis of that we will calculate the values of k1 k2 etc now in this slide number 13 what we are trying to do is construct the actual polynomial that is actual polynomial is the polynomial of the given block diagram that the of the system that we are designing it will contain un, unknowns k1 k2 k3 uh, we will construct that polynomial and we will compare that with the desired polynomial so how we do that for this you can see that uh, we take the determinant of si minus system matrix the system matrix is the system matrix of our new system when state variable feedback control has been implemented this new system is also shown in the block diagram earlier and uh, this new system you can think of as the system uh, which we say the error dynamics equation number 10-22 that equation uh, the derivative of error is equal to a minus bk times the error e that is actually a, a form of a regulator system so a minus bk is the new system matrix you can say consider it as the uh, new a so uh, the uh, the method of finding the polynomial is take the determinant of si minus a take the determinant of si minus a in over here a is a minus bk because a is the system matrix of new system therefore instead of writing a over here we write a minus bk the system matrix or the a matrix of the new system that is the error system error dynamics so uh, error dynamics so we put it over here and uh, the system is third order a minus bk is a 3 by 3 matrix s i multiplied with 3 by 3 identity matrix and we uh, subtract from si a minus bk so this is the result that we have try to work this out and try to solve it and evaluate the determinant this is the result as you see can see over here in this slide and this actual polynomial is n function of s and recall that we have m function of s that was obtained from the given poles and make a comparison you can see that k3 is alpha 2 minus 3 k2 is alpha 1 minus 2 and k1 is alpha naught on the basis of this we find out k3 k1 and k1 uh, k2 k, uh, k1 k2 k3 as you can see over here in this slide now here you can see the block diagram in slide number 15 where we have substituted the value of these uh, gains k1 k2 k3 and this is our computer designed system and 
Now recall that we actually designed this uh, for the error dynamic uh, system e derivative is equal to a minus b k into e and uh, although the block diagram is complete which we have seen in the previous slide but mathematically uh, we want to have the equations of the this system in the complete form this is what we will see in the next slide here we have that state variable model in the state variable model of the given system we substitute the value of u uh, the control law and uh, the values of uh, k1 k2 k3 that we have designed in the previous steps and here we have the complete state variable model of the type 1 servo system state variable feedback control of type 1 servo system you can simulate this uh, by using these MATLAB functions and define a variable time variable t from 0 to 5 with a step size of 0 0.01 and use the step function where uh, a b c d matrices are as per uh, the previous slide here we have the complete code you can use this code to generate the step response of the system and here we have the step response of the system which you can see now we talk about the other case type 1 design of type 1 servo system where the plant has no integrator what we have so far seen is the case where the plant has a free integrator and we designed a type 1 servo system where the plant has a free integrator but now we are discussing another situation where the plant has no free integrator if the plant has no free integrator that is the plant is a type 0 system in that case the basic principle of the design of a type 1 servo system is to insert an integrator in the feedback path between the error comparator and the plant as shown in the figure now what this means is that uh, when we don't have a free integrator in the plant which is the case that we will consider next then what we do is that we integrate we uh, insert an integrator in the loop start after the summer and before the plant we insert an integrator by ourselves we insert one upon s so if we don't have an integrator in, in the plant then we use this way a technique this method we in, in addition to the other things that we do that we have done in the previous uh, case we do those things but in addition to the, those things we do another thing and that is we insert an integrator after the summer before the plant to increase the type of the system from type 0 to type 1 and that of course changes the equations what is the effect of this thing on the equations what is the state variable model how the state variable model will be made etc these are the details that we have to see in this lecture as well as in the next lecture this is the block diagram that we were talking about in previous slide uh, that, a, that is a, a type 1 servo where the plant has no integrator so you can see over here in this slide that we have inserted an integrator after the summer and that goes into k1 and then the other summer second summer and then it goes through b and the input matrix and then uh, finally the uh, actual plant uh, whose state variable model is given what this block diagram shows is that if you are not able to understand it then let me elaborate it in a bit more detail at the heart of this block diagram if you go at the center that is if you go uh, to the uh, summer that is on the right hand side rightmost summer we have three summers over here one is the leftmost summer the next is the center summer and then we have the rightmost summer 
before this rightmost summer we have b matrix after this rightmost summer we have an integrator below this integrator is a system matrix and below this is k the uh, feedback gain matrix that is designed and then if you move forward from the integrator towards right hand side you see the c matrix so this a b integrator and c matrix these are the this is the plant that is given to us and its state variable model in the usual form that derivative of x is equal to ax plus bu y is equal to cx plus du d is zero here with this plant we connect a state variable feedback control that is shown by k the state variables x which are shown by this sort of data bus that are not only going to c matrix and a matrix they also go to k matrix these are the state variables these state variables go into the k matrix and then they go to the middle summer with the negative sign and, and another thing that you can see is that the output y is equal to x1 and that goes in as a feedback and that is subtracted from the reference input in the leftmost summer on the leftmost summer you can see we have r minus x1 that makes the error that error is not multiplied directly with k1 and uh, which was happening in the previous previous case what is new over here as compared to the previous block diagram which we have just seen in the example we have solved that the output of the leftmost summer is we can see this variable is called xi this is the uh, we have derivative of xi that goes into integrator and it becomes xi at the output that xi goes into k1 previously the error from coming out of the summer was going into the uh, multiplying with k1 here we have xi that is going into the uh, this block multiplied with block k1 that is the difference between type 1 servo system for a uh, plant which has no free integrator or a type 0 plant type 1 servo for a type 0 plant that is this is the block diagram for that situation so you can see over here in this slide that u is the control signal it's a scalar and it is going into b matrix it is going into the plant Y is the output of the system. It's also a scalar. We have one output. Xi is the output of the integrator. It's a state variable of the system. Xi is a state variable. Just like we had X as state variables, this is a new state variable because of the integrator. R is the reference input. And we are giving a step input. Step function as input. A is the system matrix. It's an n by n matrix. B is the input matrix, n by 1 matrix. C is 1 by n constant matrix, the output matrix. And K contains the uh, feedback gains, K1, K2, Kn, which we have to design. That is part of um, what we, uh, their values to be found as a design process. Now here in this slide, you can see the state equations it's the same block diagram which we have just seen we have the state equations x uh, derivative is equal to ax plus bu the state variable model of the given plant then y is equal to cx then we have the control law u is equal to minus kx plus k1 xi this is something new and different k1 is multiplied with xi as you can see and then the other part is uh, k is matrix is multiplied with x minus kx plus k1 xi we don't have uh, r over here because uh, the signal that is r minus y that goes into the summer and then that becomes xi derivative xi that is called derivative of xi and that goes to the integrator and comes out of integrator as as xi so that xi is going into the um, uh, this uh, block k1 xi is being multiplied with k1 so this is the thing something that is different over here previously 
x was x1 was subtracted from r and that was then multi that difference was the x1 minus r was multiplied with k1 but here that is not the case this is a different control law for this kind of system and the equation 1034 you can see that the derivative of xi is equal to r minus y r r minus y uh, y is cx because as x multiplied with c becomes y so we have r minus cx xi derivative is equal to r minus cx this is another this is another state equation we have a state equation 1031 as you can see over here and then we have another state equation the derivative of xi is equal to r minus cx x are all state variables r is the uh, input of this system so we have another uh, state equation over here as well Now what we assume, we assume that the plant given in equation 31 is completely state controllable and the transfer function of the given plant can be written as so and so uh, CSI minus A inverse B, this is what you must have seen in chapter number 3 in previous lectures refer back to the lectures, where the very early lectures of this course from there we get this transfer function what is said over here is that we are assuming that the given system is controllable controllability matrix fulfills the requirement with that assumption we are proceeding whenever you will be solving example you must check controllability then you we can proceed and to avoid the possibility of inserted integrator being cancelled by the zero at the origin of the uh, plant we assume that GP has no zero at the origin the second assumption is that one assumption is that controllability the second assumption is that the plant has no zero at the origin there is no s in the numerator of the plant because if that is the case then that zero at the origin will cancel out this integrator that we have inserted because you can see that if there is a s in the numerator of the transfer function and there is an s in the denominator as well they both get cancelled so we these are two basic uh, assumptions on the basis of we will uh, on the basis of, the, of that we will proceed forward now we have seen the state equations in the previous slide and we can write them together in form of uh, matrices and uh, the derivative of the state variables are all on the left hand side the state variables are we have uh, the uh, state vector x which contains x1 up to xn then we have another state variable that is xi it's uh, the, der the derivative of all the state variables are written on the left hand side and on the right hand side we uh, arrange the matrix equations and you can see that the new system matrix is in fact it uh, consists of further sub matrices in it we have the matrix A then we have uh, below it matrix minus c then we have the zeros next to it to complete the uh, row. what i think you should do over here is you should try to write all those state equations that we have seen in previous slide in form of this equation try to understand this aspect before you proceed forward this is very important and if you are not able to understand this thing uh, then you can contact me you can call me you can contact me through whatsapp but try to write those equations in form of this uh, matrix try to understand how we get this thing from those mat uh, those state equations and output equation which you can see over here and then you see u over here you, uh, we will replace this u by the control law and uh, r as far as r is concerned r is the input of the system and uh, we note that we apply the step function at t is equal to 0 and the system dynamics for t greater than 0 can be obtained on the basis of this equation I think it's enough for lecture number 16
uh, this time that is given to you you must uh, go through all the uh, different uh, concepts that we have discussed in today's lecture and try to work with the derivations and try to solve the example and try to make sense of it all and you can contact me call me and, uh, and ask me if there's anything that you are not able to understand book reading is a must you must have your book in front of you you must read it and uh, try to mm, uh, follow the lecture while following the lecture refer to the book and then separately read the book as well and try to link together things and make sense of it what's happening over here let me uh, give you a quick overview of this lecture in the first part of the lecture we talked about the type 1 servo system for a system for a plant that is type 1 uh, that has a free integrator in that case what we did was that we introduced the concept of uh, defined the error introduced the concept of error and we made error dynamic system error dynamics we modeled the error dynamics error dynamics and we applied the state variable feedback control design method that we used for a regulator actually we have a servo system but we converted it into a regulator and applied the concept of a regulator on it to design the controller and then we uh, converted that back into the servo system with that controller and we also obtained the uh, state variable model of the overall system with the Im implemented state vari uh, variable feedback control in it so what we did was that we actually designed a state variable feedback control for a type 1 servo system where the plant was also type 1 and that was uh, example 10.4 and we also simulated it and its step response now the other thing that we started working which is not complete yet it, it, the discussion will continue in the next lecture that is type 1 servo system for a type 0 plant we have a plant which is a type 0 system which does not have a free integrator in this kind of uh, situation what we do is that we insert an integrator after the first summer that is the leftmost summer and before k1 and uh, we introduce another new state variable that is xi and this adds into our uh, state variable model our state variable model, model is becomes more sophisticated more uh, a bit more you know complex previously if we had three state variables now we have four state variables we introduce another state, uh, state variable in it and that happens because we introduce a, a an integrator we insert an integrator after summer before k1 and that is because our system our plant the plant that was given to us it had no free integrator but now because of this integrator there is a free integrator and we in one thing that we keep in our mind is that there should not be the plant should not have a zero at origin there should not be s in the numerator of the plant transfer function because that s will cancel out this free integrator that we have inserted therefore we must uh, check this thing and ensure that this is not the situation the other thing is that again for this whole method like before controllability check is a must we must check controllability if the system is not controllable this pole placement method cannot be used so this is a, a thing that uh, we must mm, keep in mind before starting the solution of such problems this time is given to you to do the working of all the examples that we have uh, considered in today's lecture and all the derivations and try to make sense of them all and if you find it difficult you can call me you can contact me you can send message through whatsapp uh, during this time Please attend the classes as per the timetable. Now the Ramza in the Ramzan, 
the timing of classes has changed and the time duration of class has also changed so mark your attendance accordingly whenever you come here you should come according to the timetable write the time in in the comments your name your class section and uh, time in and then when you come finish with the lecture uh, then you should write the time out in reply to the previous comment and uh, that's enough uh, any you must uh, write um, uh, a sing start a single comment write a single comment com the time in and in reply to that comment write the time out don't write time outs as a separate comment uh, a lot of students are following my guidelines although a uh, few of them few of you are not following uh, my the instruction to them is that they should follow this thing write the time in in the comment with your name roll number section and then when you leave in reply to the same comment time out One more thing that I wanted to tell you is that uh, be regular, keep on attending these lectures and uh, don't let things get piled up. You will not be able to cover them. If things get piled up, accumulated, then you will. it will be very difficult for you to follow them. Therefore, uh, you must attend these lectures and if any lecture is missed, spend some extra time and try to catch up don't get late things will get piled up this is a hard course you might fight uh, find it difficult then I know this topic, uh, this lecture and the previous lecture, they are hard for you uh, but I want you to be patient and consistent and read the book and try to dis ask me, discuss with me and try to understand things. It's not at all difficult if you focus and try to read the book. Apparently it's a hard topic, otherwise the things are very simple. You just have to remember a few things, make sense of a few things and do with the working numerical problems and it's done. It's not a very hard portion. It might look hard to you but actually it's not hard.
so here we end our today's lecture